Okay, okay, let's go, let's go. Happy Sunday! Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Okay, okay. I got a poll lah. You okay? Can can take a look at the poll. Do you think this war will end uh quickly? Yes, could end in a few weeks. No, could last for months or years. But this is a very important factor. How long will this war last? Yeah. So uh, we saw the Russia and the Ukraine war. Russia invaded Ukraine. I think early two zero two zero. So we thought it would be a swift victory. Well, the market did not crash out because it thought it was a swift victory. In the end, it dragged out for more than one year. Then in the second half of two zero two two, then the market crashed. So my view is that will crash or not. It depends on whether it's a quick one. Or a long one, yeah. So let me say hi to you all. Okay, Dim C H. Palestinian army do not have any military support from any country, unlike Ukraine. Ha, <laughs> is it? I read online they are supported by Iran. Eh, later I'll talk more about it. Vivian Ng, more like terrorist attack. Yeah, I saw the the videos on Twitter. You all see or not? Wow, damn scary. Eh? They owe people also kill. Ah, uh, then they they hold those uh people hostage. Wow, very scary. Uh, Wallis, good evening. Jasper Lim, good evening. Happy Sunday. Pang Yao Tian, what kind of war? Okay, okay. So I give you a a, a sub summary first. So, or uh, the Hamas uh, which is a terrorist organization, uh, uh, attacked the Israel, or uh, uh, this 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 morning lah, uh, or or, or so called uh, in the morning. It's actually a holiday. Yeah. So, uh, they took the opportunity to have a surprise attack. Yeah. So. As a counter attack, uh, the Israeli they declare war. They declare that this is will be a full scale war. So today, right Sunday in the Middle East, it is a working day. So the market trades and the market crash more than six percent. The Middle East, uh, the stock market, the stock exchange drop uh six percent. Also, this is the Tel Aviv stock exchange. Uh, this is the Israeli exchange. <clears throat> so. They already doing some of the missile strikes or uh, uh at the Gaza Strip lah to counter attack. They announced that they will be entering on foot. Yeah, they they be entering was the terrorists uh took took some of their people as a uh, hostage. So what will be the impact? So for me right, I I won't talk about who is wrong, who is right. Not into the politics ah, because we are an investor. So we want to know what's the impact in the stock market, how we want to position ourselves. So usually. When there's a war, right? Or usually the impact is always negative. The short term impact is always negative. So tomorrow, when the STI or the Hang Seng Index open, right, likely you will be down one or two percent. But which country will have the most impact? Is Europe and US. Don't be surprised if Europe open down three or four percent. US open down two or three percent. Also, usually when there's a war, right, there will be people running away from these countries to escape the war. So there will be refugees. Or right? then because uh Middle East they're connected uh through land to Europe. So previously, like the Afghanistan, all this, uh, there are a lot of refugees. Then it create a crisis for Europe. Or right? they they get too many of these refugees already, and now they want to block them off. Yeah, and Europe their economy is more linked. Or has small links uh to to the Middle East, then why got got this problem? Or it actually started from Biden. Biden is the idiot lah. Uh, but Biden really mismanaged it very well, uh, very very badly. Uh, uh Donald Trump would have did a better job. That's how I feel lah. Uh, like the Russia Ukraine crisis, right? I believe Donald Trump will come to a deal with Putin, give Putin uh. A small rabbit, so that Putin will not go and kill the deer, which is Ukraine. In the end, uh, they did not give in to Putin, and Putin uh attack Ukraine. The Biden should have struck a deal. Then now, right, is Biden gives six billion dollars to redeem five hostage from the Iran. So they unfreeze the six billion in frozen uh uh Iran oil revenues that is uh inside uh those international banks. Or American banks, so they unfreeze the funds for them, but the agreement is that this fund right will only be available for humanitarian trade, like food, medicine, infrastructure, 
uh, help help or, or or building hospitals those kind of things but in the end you think Iran they they, they use it uh, for their basic needs no uh, in the end or uh, it actually free up for them to do some te terrorism uh. so uh, in this attack, we saw that they actually holding very advanced military equipment. Like they have the missile to, to shoot down the helicopter is actually bought in the black market from Ukraine. So Ukraine actually sold some of their their goods uh, to, to the uh, so-called the, the terrorists uh, in, in, in this movie. Yeah, so uh, it's very bad. So Donald, Donald J. Trump, uh, Donald Trump come and condemn Biden. Say that oh can you believe that the crook biden giving six billion to a terrorist regime in iran oh then blah 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 oh, this is a complete incompetent fool that is absolutely destroying america uh, so uh they quarrel here and there uh. but i think biden made a mistake uh. it's not worth it uh. give the six billion to to get back the five american hostage so so i then now the funding has gone into the wrong hands. So the surprise attack, right? Yesterday, right? So they, they attack around the, that is close to them. Uh. They, they use bulldozer, push through the fence, then go in and uh, attack the civilians and hold the civilians uh, hostage. Also, uh, this, this is a very coordinated attack. And it's also quite uh, on a wide scale. So the, the big mistake about Israel, right, is their in, intel. So US and Israel, they are very strong allies and their intelligence failed. This kind of attack, right, usually sh there are at least a few months of planning, like the equipment, the coordination, the scheduling. Yeah, then the attack it is on the holiday it itself. Yeah, so I'm very surprised uh, their, their intel did not capture it. So it, it's a failure. Uh. Or on their military uh, side or they fail to capture the intel and they were taken by <clears throat> surprise and that's why their casualty rate is so high it's the highest ever so both sides are they always in, in war one the palestinian and the is is really they fight, fight here and there on and off i think this is the fourth fourth so-called war already uh, be, between them but i won't go through the history la. you you can watch youtube youtube a lot of documentaries i've been Watching, I watched I think four or five documentaries already, but it's quite interesting lah. But I won't say which side is wrong, wrong or right, or, or wrong or or right lah. But my, my personal feel la, or, or not that uh, I'm against uh, anyone. For me, my, my religion is different from from them. Uh, I think so. I don't take any side. But it feels a lot of similarities. What I'm from Singapore. Singapore, uh, we are in the middle. We are surrounded by a few countries, right? that their majority of population, they are Muslim. But Singapore, right, Muslim is a minority population. Mostly 70% uh, of population is Chinese. So Israel is also uh, the same thing. They are Jewish, but they are surrounded by other nations who are Muslim. So when you have a different religion, different thoughts, right, or then you, there, there will always be conflicts. Yeah, so you can go watch the documentary, yeah, but not say, who is right who who is wrong uh, what it has been such a long like centuries of, of, of history so uh the, the gossip on twitter is that they captured this lady right and they wow really mutilate her wow very wow very awful uh, those, those videos then they they post on the twitter that say that this is a, a israeli soldier then they see the tattoo on her leg from the dead body actually she's not she's a german she's a german she went there for, for the party la, all this la, go dancing la, go drinking la. then uh, in the rave party suddenly oh, the terrorists come and attack then uh, she, she, she got involved and she was captured then she, she's dead already yeah she's actually an influencer she's a tattoo artist wow then so her picture went, went viral yeah then her mother is begging that hope that uh, the Hamas will, will, will give her back her daughter's body then uh, a lot of uh, so-called chobu you see, that all these right all these pictures are all the hostages that are being taken so you see the trend uh, if you're male uh, they, they don't want you uh. if you female then, then they want to capture you female that the value is higher so they did uh, bring back already yeah so uh, because they are holding hostage right this is actually the same playbook they copy the russian the playbook so when russian invade ukraine right they also take hostages and they bring back in 
so they they have bargaining power. So for the uh, is view this right, it seems that they're not gonna make a bargain. Uh. They are gonna enter it. They announced already. So probably now they be entering already. They will enter by ground. So this is a bit different. The past encounter right, usually they just fire rocket or destroy destroy that then win already. Or it's like, uh, but this time they entering by ground. Wow. So it's quite significant. Uh. It's, it's, it could be like they want to wipe them out or what. Wow. It's quite scary. Uh. So, but both sides will suffer huge, huge losses. Uh. Also, we, we go back to the stock market. <clears throat> so, what is the impact on the stock market? Also, we all know that Middle East is about oil. Or OPEC, they are, they are the lar largest producer of oil. More than half the world's supply of petroleum is by, by them. So, last year, in 22 early, we saw the Russia-Ukraine war. Oil was approaching almost $100. That's why Biden announced that they want to release their strategic petroleum reserve. 1 million barrels every day. So you, you see this chart at the right. So over the past one year, they, they throw about half their strategic uh, reserve supply to push the oil prices down so that inflation will not be so bad. So the strategic petroleum reserve, right? if you look at my, my, my task sharing, uh, I think half year ago, right, it's actually it's because in the past, uh, the Middle East, they were at war with the US so they did an embargo means they all don't want to sell to the US or to restrict US or to make US a die <laughs> that's why through that they learned the lesson already so in the oil energy crisis right or oh, what wow, US uh, faced 20 percent inflation because of the oil embargo or you can go back and study the history so they learned their lesson that's why they have this strategic petroleum reserve is for against embargo or during war situation exactly now now is the time they need to use the strategic petroleum reserve but they already used half of it already last year ah oh, so it's a problem so uh there's the cartoon here now you see biden is gonna back opec uh, to to give them chance already uh, because opec uh you saw that saudi and russia together they cooperate to lower their product production to artificially push oil prices higher so recently oil hit a high of 95 then it pulled back down to 80 dollars or why it pulled back down because of the news of higher and longer higher rates for longer will lead to a recession in 2024 that's why if there's a recession there will be less demand for oil that's why it came back down to 82 but now we're gonna see oil spiking up uh, due to the war so what are the experts saying so Chen Mat, uh, from the oil podcast, you know, a uh, billionaire, very smart person. So he, he's someone that I follow a lot, that like Chen Mat, uh, Bill Ackman, uh, they are very active on uh, Twitter. So what are the three key points? He say, how does oil not spike again? So confirm oil will spike up. Uh. So I won't be surprised that uh, oil immediately bounce back up to 90. So if the war is prolonged, it might go to 100 easily. Yeah? Uh, $100 oil, if... if it's not a swift victory la. or they whack already then other people come and whack them because their surrounding neighbors are also uh, keen to, to, to invade uh, Israel also so if other people join in the fight or oh, then the, the war might be extended then oil might go towards 100 so it might spike to 90 then it might slowly go to 100 so that's the problem so higher oil prices will mean that inflation is coming back so if inflation spikes up what does the Fed do? If you now already expect one more hike to 5.75, are you going to hike to 6%? 6% is psychologically very, is that it will crash the market. 6% psychologically, the market will crash 20-30%. Yeah. <clears throat> then of all this event, right, capital markets could potentially trigger a recession because higher inflation, then you have to uh, hike rates to 6%. Then businesses, the borrowing costs increase, businesses go bankrupt, spending, consumer spending slows down. Then 2024 is not a soft landing, it's not a mild recession, it becomes a hard landing, it becomes a deep recession. So it, it has a lot of compounding effect. It could escalate and create a recession or even 6% interest rate. So there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of fear. So as an investor, how are we going to hedge? How are we going to position ourselves? 
So I've been in the market since 2008. Lah. I've seen a few wall. Lah. Then usually what happens, right? The, the normal playbook is that oil will spike. So if you want to buy oil, you must be decisive. Lah. If you think that the, the war will be prolonged, oil will go on the uptrend, then you buy USO, United States Oil ETF. Oh, but oil is already up quite a lot already this year. It's up like 10%, more, slightly more than 10% already. Yeah, if, if you are, feel that you are, you think that this war will be very prolonged, it will go deeper, then oil will, will go higher. Oil is confirmed go up one, just that how high, we don't know. So oil will, will spike up. Then doing, that, that's, so that's the offensive play. Like. If you want to go for capital gains, you want to uh, do a short-term trading, then uh, you go for USO, long USO uh, as a short-term trade. But I don't do that anymore. In, in my younger days, I do short-term trading, but now I'm purely a value investor. Just that I share with you my thoughts. Uh, uh, in case, but like you all, some of you all like short-term trading, some of you all like to buy and hold for long-term. Yeah, so I just share some of my ideas with you all. So uh, if you want to go on the defense or you worry that, oh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the stock market will crash, what to do, or uh, then, to be on the defensive side, usually people will hold gold. So, uh, because in a war situation, right, our currency will become uh, worthless. So people will switch their currency into physical gold, uh, especially if they want to move from country to country. So you will see like the people in the Middle East, or they, they will increase their purchase of, of gold. In fact, China has been buying a lot of gold over the past one year because they are negative uh, on, on the US dollar. But on, on the flip side, a lot of people will buy the US dollar. So for the gold, right, instead of buying the physical gold, your, your, you must store it <coughs> and it's troublesome. Right? You can just buy from the exchange. The ticker code is GLD, Spider Gold. Then because people are fearful, right, a lot of people will flock to triple A currencies. One of them is the US dollar. So US dollar has been very strong uh, this year is because of the higher interest rate. Was five percent risk free, is very attractive. So uh, the emerging markets currency have been sold down, and money has been moving to the U.S. dollar. When U.S. dollar will go even stronger. So what are the currencies that people will flock to? Is like uh, U.S. dollar, then candy, Canadian dollar, Hong Kong dollar, Sing dollar, and Swiss franc. These are the only five currencies that are triple A. Yeah, the emerging market currencies you will likely uh, weaken. Example like Malaysia, uh, Ringgit, then uh, Indonesia, uh, Rupiah, especially countries uh, uh, of more like the Muslim countries uh, because they worry that uh, things will escalate, people become more radical. Uh, for, for example, uh, in, uh, before I came in, I saw on Twitter, like in Egypt, uh, Egypt, right, they actually attack uh, Israeli tourists, uh, a few Israeli tourists uh, were being murdered in, in public uh, in uh, Egypt uh, because they feel that they want to support a, a certain side. Yeah, for me, I don't take any side. Uh, so don't be like, uh, oh, don't say, oh, master, wow, you, you say this, no good, then no good. <laughs> uh, police come ask me lim copy. Uh, or I'm not here to say I support any side uh, or I don't support any side. Or uh, we are just talking about the stock market. What I just share with you what happened and what I think the market will move. Also, uh, you focus. On the stock market so those in the chat uh, don't be too radical say oh i support this side uh, oh, fight and win uh, kill them uh. don't, don't, don't like that uh. don't, don't like that chat uh. or just think about the stock market people on the stock market how to make money in the stock market yeah so uh people will be very fearful uh. definitely short term is fear uh. so i go back to the poll so what what you all think how long will the war last so i end the poll yeah so wow most of you are quite negative uh, i would say yeah, no, it could last for months or years, 62%. So the ideal situation that is that it's a fast victory. You whack, go in, whack, clear up, then end already. Then nobody touch again, then they slowly rebuild. So that's the best uh, scenario. Uh, uh, if it's a prolonged one, uh, it's like uh, other states in the Middle East uh, wow, start, start to rise uh, and fight and fight. Uh, wow, then... Uh, it, it, but this could happen. It could be a chain effect. I will draw arms, and, and, and so wow. So I don't know how it will play out, lah. But 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 this is my my talk, lah. Yeah. So, uh, if you are fearful, then then you commodities, lah. Basically, commodities people will hold commodities and triple A currency, lah. But most of you are 
my audience, more than half of you are from Singapore. Singapore is very safe. Uh. Sing dollar, a lot of holding power. So, so don't worry. Whole SGD put in the Singapore saving bond if you are scared. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh, my throat a bit dry. Uh. Recently, I ate the mala hot pot. The IV limb tipped me that I ate the mala hot pot. Then my throat become very dry. Okay. Neva, welcome, welcome. NY, Anantas. Oh. Jasper Lim. Oh. Xiang Sui Yo Du. Ah. Wow, you, you, you listen to such uh, the old song. Ah. Oldies song. Ah. 1980 song. Ah. BT Ko, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Vivian Ng, I, I can't see this with any impact. Yeah, Palestine don't export anything. Israel export. Oh, so Israel actually, their biggest export market is to the US. Israel, their biggest trading partner is the US. They export things like diamond. Israel, they have the artificial diamond that, that they mark, that, that create the artificial diamond. Like the, the what are the blue box is what? I forget already. Yeah. yeah. The Tiffany, uh, Tif Tif Tiffany diamond is actually from, <coughs> it's real, if, if I'm not wrong. So it will affect uh, such companies. Yeah, but, but US, they also have a lot of defense companies. Defense company the, the stock price will go up. So then, uh, it's real, they also manufacture, I think those uh, circuit board, and also, uh, I think, petroleum related. Uh, they do like the refinery, all this. Yeah, so uh, US is the one being impact uh, if uh, Israel is down. Palestine, their economy don't do much one. Palestine, I think, has unemployment 40%. They rely more on the global aid. Oh, miracle. Welcome, welcome. Sunday, nobody to date. Don't go dating. Just chit chat, go out with friends, at home, relax. Yeah, just for them. MLT, GD, RTX, may ready. What is all this? Wow, I don't know. All this is what? Energy companies. Uh, master want to learn. Oh, Lockheed Martin, yeah, the, 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 the weapon company. So, uh, all these were ready because they sell the weapon one. So, so like, European countries, Middle East countries, they will want to uh, get, get more weapon and beef up their defense. General Dynamics Corporation, yeah, also a uh, defense contract one. Thanks for introducing all this for us. Yeah, I forget to add this in, in my slides. I should get, I get a list of those US uh, defense companies. Yeah. RTS Corporation. This one I'm not familiar. Yeah, the oh, it's retail. Oh, retail, retail. I know. I retail. Yeah, yeah, retail. Yeah, but the one I'm familiar is the Lockheed Martin. Usually, this is the 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 blue chip uh defense company uh. The market cap is hundred billion. It's, it's quite big. Well, year to date is down sixteen percent, near fifty two weeks low. So actually, they are, they are pretty cheap leh. P fifteen only. Yeah. So so likely they they gonna rally. Yeah. Third Maggie, I own four of the five prime US defense contractor. Wow, you quite hot, yeah. You make money already. Yep, CH, yeah. Adrian Go, Ada Ang, good evening. Lim CH, Arab countries don't dare to support a uh, Palestinian army and this conflict will end one in two months. Yeah, I, I hope that it ends soon uh, so that less people uh, will be involved, less casualty, and the stock market can uh, recover from there. My view is that I think it will last for a few weeks only. My, my view, but, but I may be wrong. Uh. This one is very hard to predict. Uh. Very hard to predict. Yeah. Wow. So your comments a lot about uh, uh, the, the one I skipped. Uh, boss, I'm not taking any side. Uh, who, who is right or wrong? Uh. Yeah. All in go ETF. Uh. Buy the GLD. Uh. GLD actually year to date is actually, I think it's quite flat. Uh. GLD. Go actually has not been performing. Uh. Nobody buy go. Uh. Everybody go and because uh, go competes with the government bonds. People prefer buy the government bonds, get 4% interest. See, year to date is flat. Go is flat. So I think go will rally. La. Go, go, go should rally. Yeah, go, go looks cheap. La. Yeah, but go is, is like crisis, then you use it. La. It's a store of value. La. It's like an alternative uh, currency. La. Yeah. Mr. Lu likes is you. Yeah, Mr. Lu. I, actually, I'm a fan of Mr. Lu. I watch most of his videos. If I'm not mistaken, he mentioned before his son is working in Israel there. So I hope that his son is alright. His son, I think he works at a Israel startup. Ah. Yeah. Then somehow he encouraged his son goes to Israel to work. Wow, he talk, 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 talk until, wow, he boss, he like to show off. Talk about his, his daughter ah, and son, ah. wow, high achiever, all this. Ah. Good luck, go Israel. Eh. There are you. Yeah. 
Okay. So, okay. America, I thought master like to drink coffee. Ah, ah coffee. Milo, Milo or coffee also can. Morning, I drink uh, green tea uh, nowadays. Yeah. Sometimes I drink coffee. White, white coffee, I, I like. Shina Choi, welcome, welcome. Oh, Shina Choi become bird bird. Yeah, you also become bird bird. Eh. You win that time, you win the free Baba bird. Yeah. David Wong, I think tomorrow might fast down, then rebound. Uh, well, we see how it goes. Uh, see how it plays out. If it's a fast victory, then suddenly market will turn around. But the initial impact usually is is market will go down first. Then as as best is the war end quickly, law. If it end quickly, then the market should be all right. Vivian, I think Europe will kinda cause near uh, geographically. Yeah, Europe it, Europe is very bad. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, so I I did mention the currency thing, right? So. Everybody flock to uh triple A currency like US dollar and Sing dollar. So what currency they sell? Euro. Euro will be sold down. So you don't be surprised. Uh. So yesterday I talked about IRIS. IRIS is the German assets. It's denominated in Euro. So Euro the, the past uh few years, right, from two point uh two uh, against the Sing dollar uh, become one point five already. So don't be surprised like goes to 1.4 or what yeah so i really don't like iris iris is very jealous yeah so i'll talk about ak71 and the singapore stocks yeah so uh out the next out the second half of sharing i'll talk about the singapore market what's all people what my audience more than half is from singapore so i keep getting questions that oh master ah reads can buy or not banks can buy or not so I keep getting the same comment. So one shot I answer you all. Don't worry. Yeah. So I cover Singapore, Hong Kong, and also U.S. market. All I cover. But I try to strike a balance, lah. Like my the previous deep dive, I did cover some reads already. Then my recent deep dive, I cover the U.S. market like Coca Cola. Then I cover the Hong Kong market, China Mobile. So all these are dividend stocks. And nowadays I see the interest in dividend stocks is very high because the risk free rate is. 4%, 5%, so the dividend stocks, they get sold down a lot. So dividend stocks feels attractive. So a lot of people ask me, Master can buy or not? Can buy Coca-Cola or not? Can buy China Mobile or not? So feel free to feedback on, to me what companies you want me to cover. Then I'll cover and explain to you all. So today I'll talk about DBS and I'll talk about CLCT. I'll talk about banks and, and REITs a bit. Yeah. So uh, Europe likely will, will sell down. Ivy Lim, our goddess of SE, welcome, welcome. MT Pulse, welcome, welcome. Yeah. So wow, you so 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 wow, so much comments are uh, on the war. Chaos in the Gaza Strip. Yeah, the the war has been ongoing uh, for for like one one decade already. I used to to uh, have the physical go, but I sold away. Already. You need to have a safe deposit at home. Uh. Uh, my old house, we all have the face deposit. Now, new house don't have. <laughs> so, uh, uh, physical go very troublesome. Uh, yeah. But uh, sometimes, uh, if I'm doing well, I'll buy the physical gold chain uh, for my brother. My brother got two small kids. Then buy the chain, put uh, at the baby leg or the baby hand, that type. Yeah, because can can preserve value. Uh. Yeah. I really, nope, I still have my... Margin open on SE. I think it will touch 46. Uh. Hope it will be a quick war and then market can recover from there. Okay, so let me talk about the Singapore market banks and REITs before I, I, I come back uh, to chit chat with you all. Also, the second half sharing. Somehow recently, I bad mouth the AK uh, through my shots and my live stream. <laughs> Then the views very high. A lot of people resonate with me or what? I don't know. Yeah. So for me, right? Oh, I provide an alternative view lah. So you watch the AK video, then you watch my my video. Our views are very different. Then you see which side makes sense to you. So for AK, right? He feels that wow, China real estate very very bad lah. Wow, Hong Kong property crashing ah. Wow, very very bad lah. Wow. Then for him, uh, in his recent videos, he's super bearish. Yeah, super bearish, especially on China, and he says that hot cash, cash is where you want to hold. Then even for REITs, yesterday I think he talked about his own IRIS. He won't buy it unless it drops further. Lah. Then 
Uh, then I think in the comments people ask him also which can buy or not. He said that he won't be a buyer of wheats. Yeah. Then for his portfolio, he said that over the past few years he had been selling wheats. So now his portfolio about forty percent is in banks. So the contradicting part is that his top position is banks, yet he keeps saying China is no good. But do you know that our banks right, or Singapore is their biggest market. China is actually their second biggest market. One quarter of our local banks, the business comes from China. So if he's bearish on China, he's bearish on his own bank position. Example like DBS. Also DBS, right? If you look, you dig into the financials. The thing is, AK, right? I feel that he don't know how to analyze companies, and he never researched on his companies, right? So you look at their loan books. So for banks, right? Their income, right? Half of them comes from interest. Another. Half come from non-interest income. Non-interest income is like your credit card lah, your insurance lah, your stock trading lah, your fund management lah, those kind of things. So for banks, right? I actually I don't like the Singapore banks now because their price have been holding well. But I think there is downside to the Singapore banks because their non-interest income will slowly be eaten away by the fintech players. Yeah, nowadays do you use DBS because to trade your stocks? No. People use Tiger, Mumu. Am I right? Nowadays, uh, do you go to the bank to buy your insurance? No, you can buy Sing Life. You just go online. You can buy insurance already. Then, do you use the Master and Visa card more or less? Less. You go to the hawker. You use digital payment. You use Shopee Pay, Grab Pay. So their non-interest uh business is being slowly eroding already. But banks, right? If you are buying banks, it's mostly for the interest income, which is the, their core business. So what is interest income? It means lending money. You borrow money from the depositors. They put one million with you. You give them a, a fixed deposit interest of maybe three percent. You take the money, then you lend out to other people like SME loan, house loan, or car loan. You lend at six percent. You borrow at three percent. You lend at six percent. The difference, the spread, the three percent is your net interest margin minus your rental and your staff cost. Uh, Singapore banks, their net interest margins is about two point two percent, which is pretty good, pretty good. But we dig further into their loan book. Most of their loan, right? Or you can see here, lah. Thirty July two zero two three, the first half of this year. The biggest by geography, right? The biggest is Singapore. Oh, so it's about one. Nine four billion ah billion ah one nine four billion, then a one nine four uh sorry, is it one nine four? I don't know how many ah uh, yeah one nine four billion yeah or or hundred million yeah yeah but here is already million already so one hundred and ninety four thousand million yeah so one nine four billion yeah one nine four billion yeah correct right what banks are they are very uh leverage yeah they are high highly leverage where's Hong Kong and China, so we add them up so sixty eight plus fifty two that is uh. One two o one hundred and twenty billion in exposure. So we don't take at the full number. You look relatively. So actually, at number two, right, is a very big portion. You know, oh, just a bit more is as big as the Singapore already. Their exposure, am I right? So, oh, AK seventy one say Hong Kong very bad, China very bad, but his top position is OCBC. His second largest position is DBS. Then you see. You are doing so much business. You are doing so much loans to Hong Kong and China. And where are all the loans going to? They are by industry, right? Their top lending is building and construction. You are lending to the property developers, and even you lend to Singapore property developers, like Capital Land. Capital Land, right? Half their construction is in China. They are building the shopping malls in China, which later I'll talk about the the CLCT Capital Land Commercial Trust. They build the shopping malls. They complete it. Then they inject it into CLCT the the REIT. Then the second one, you see, wow, China empty houses, ghost town. But yet you are doing the housing loan also, ah,、uh, in Singapore and also in Hong Kong and China. So both property development and housing. Yeah, so they have so much exposure. So are you bearish on your own DBS and OCB? So the way. Uh, AK and Yuan talks that、uh, is very contradicting. He's bearish, but but then he say he's very confident in the Singapore banks. He say that、uh, it will go well. It's very solid. Yet he's bearish on Hong Kong and China. So, ah,、uh, that's very conflicting. 
Then we look at the credit allowance. So you lend money, as I say, you borrow at 3%, you lend at 6%. If everything goes right, you earn the 3%. But what if they don't pay you back? What if they go bankrupt? When they go bankrupt, it's called MPL, non-performing loan, or you call it uh, allowance. Allowance means you confirm you cannot get back the money already, you write off. So you look at the allowance. Uh. You see, Singapore, although it's the biggest, right, the allowance is actually lesser. Singapore, you have less bad loan. Whereas Hong Kong and China, the loans is more defaults. But this is understandable because we are seeing now all the dangers in, in, in the China property market. So that reflects the truth. Then you look at the total allowance has doubled from last year. First half was 101. Second half was 233 uh, million. Also, your, your allowance doubled. So the big question is, in the second half of 2023 and 2024, will your allowance increase or decrease or go sideways? I think it's more likely to increase or given what we are, we are seeing in the Hong Kong and China market. So DBS is very heavy on China. In 2021, two years ago, they bought a 13% stake in Shenzhen Bank for $1 billion. So they paid one times book value. So I think they are overpaying. Now you look at the banks, they are all trading at half price to book value. So, but they are very keen to expand now. So DBS is, uh, there are two markets that they want to expand aggressively. One is China, the other one is India. So they also acquired uh, the India bank, but that, that's a topic for another day. So if you have interest in future, I might do a deep dive. So when I do a deep dive, it's just one individual company. I talk about it for like half an hour or one hour. Today is not a deep dive. I just try to explain to you all why, why I feel that AK-71 his words are very contradicting and what's the truth about the exposure to, to China. Then uh, Gupta uh, PU, uh, which is the uh, the CEO of DBS, you see tensions but no risk of war between China and Taiwan. So he's optimistic. So for me also, I'm, I'm bullish on China. I'm optimistic on China over the long term. That's why I'm 90% vested in uh, Alibaba. So definitely DBS, they feel that China is the risk is manageable. That's why they want to keep investing and they are keen to explore increasing its holding in the Shenzhen Rural Commercial Bank. So that they, they will inject more money. Lah. So the rule is that in China, right, you cannot own a majority position in the Chinese banks. As a foreigner, the maximum you can hold is 20% stake. So most likely they want to increase their stake to 20%. Then they, they IPO it or what. Then we see how it goes. So for OCBC, the same thing also. So OCBC and DBS, both their stock price holding quite well uh, this year. Whereas the REITs have come down. So the bird asked me, banks can buy or not? My answer is can buy. If you buy right, you, the idea is that there's not much growth because they are non-interest income business like stockbroking, uh, insurance, uh, fund management, uh, uh, payment. Uh, they will be disrupted by the fintech players. So that area no growth. But their core business, their intra interest uh, income business will still remain solid. So what, uh, example, housing loan, car loan. Cannot be you go the Grab app uh, or the Shopee app and you say, I want to borrow $1 million to buy condo. Then you use the Grab app to do the loan. I, say, I don't think so. Lah. Cannot Also cannot be, let's say, high net worth people. You have, high, you have let's say, $10 million. Will you put it with DBS or will you put it in your Shopee Pay app? or to, to, to do your retirement. So I don't think so. Lah. If you have $10 million, most likely you will put the bank, then they have a pretty RM, then they will serve you, or give you tea, talk with you, tell you how to diversify your portfolio. You, you get the professional to do it. So that's where I think they have the advantage. Ah. So uh, like the, that you want to invest in property, you want to buy a condo, you want to take a house loan, you want to take a car loan. So th there are areas that Shopee and Grab, they are unable to disrupt. So I think that's the, the interest income business, which is you get depositor money, then you do the car loan, house loan, and SME loan. So that's where they will remain strong. And that's where they continue to be a cash cow. So for DBS, OCBC, this kind of banks, right, it's very hard for, for them to continue growing really. They, they will become dinosaur. They are very matured. And you can see that nowadays they are paying most of their earnings as dividends. Yeah, because 
no point they they ra rather pay out as dividend because they retain it right they have no areas to grow already they cannot grow already yeah so they become very matured so if you buy the banks you just want to get like six percent dividend every year uh, that that's the mindset you have you don't expect to buy dbs at 30 dollars and hope that it goes to 40 or 50 dollars that's the wrong mindset uh. so i believe the stock price w could remain sideways for a long time uh. you, you won't get capital gains yeah it's purely for dividends only if you want to buy the singapore banks but the ak say wow china very bad uh, property oversupply uh, there's more houses that people can can live in uh. and then hong kong is very bad uh, property prices crash 20 percent uh. but ocbc had uh, one quarter of their business comes from hong kong and china and ocbc is his top position i think he, he has more than half a million in ocbc so ocbc you see uh, number one uh, for their loan right is singapore or at about one two three billion then 72 billion exposure is uh, greater china so and for them it's a bit same as dbs you see that building and construction is the majority they are very heavy on building and construction and home loan so they are very exposed to the property market both in singapore and china they are very exposed to the property sector because property sector is the one that needs a lot of leverage you buy a house, you put 20% down, you borrow 80%. Same for the developers. They, they need a, a, a lot of uh, funding to get the projects running. Yeah, so they have, a, and OCBC, right, over the past uh, decade, right, they keep pumping in money to expand into their China business. So uh, back then, I think this was like five or six years ago, uh, they spent almost $5 billion to acquire Wingham Bank in the Hong Kong market and they paid a very high premium because back then China was in a bull run. Oh, they paid two times book value for Wingham. Oh, that, that's very expensive. So Wingham is one of those uh, mid-cap mid uh, family banks. Uh. So they come to a deal, the founders decide to cash out and sell Then They took all the founder shares and they make an offer to the public to buy all the remaining shares yeah the last re it was the last remaining family owned bank la. yeah so so they, they bought it up so uh in 2017 they continue so that what news i think was 2015 if i'm not wrong so seven eight years ago so dbs they continue to attack into the china market so that was the hong kong market for china market they go in by bank of ningbo so they first acquired a 12 percent stake in 06 then in 07, they raised the 6 to 20%, the maximum allowed. So as a foreigner, the most you can own is 20%. Yeah, you cannot own like 50% because of the regulatory uh, restrictions. So for Singapore, right, now the CEO changed already, la, or become the Helen Wong. So in, in her recent speech in the 3rd of July, right, she says that OCBC eyes ah, expansion in China. They are going all in on China. Yeah. If you are bearish, so bearish on China, then why are you buying OCBC? Why are you still holding OCBC? Yeah, so you see their exposure in China is all the major tier 1 cities uh, that they have exposure to and they will continue to expand. Yeah, so what I don't have about AK is that uh, uh, he, sometimes his, his sharing can be a bit contradicting. Lah. So do use your own judgment. Then the next thing he said about REITs. So like he said the iris, iris I shared with you all yesterday, he has been buying iris since I think six or seven years ago. He has subscribed to the rice issue at 48 cents or so. Then now iris are 37 cents, he said he won't buy. He will only buy if it drops further and pays a 9% yield with a good margin of safety. He says that he's not keen to buy any reads now. So my view is different. Uh. My, my view is that, huh? For the REITs, right, they already crashed a lot already. Like, like CLCT is down 33%. A lot of blue chip REITs, they are down 20, 30%. 20, 30% discount, you don't buy. Then when you want to buy, you wait for 50%, 80% discount. I don't know. For me, I think if you have want to buy, right, you separate your buying into three bullets. So I think now is a time to fire your first and second bullet. Every 10% drop, you continue to fire. 30% drop, you fire your first bullet. 
40% drop, you fire a second bullet. 50% drop, you fire a third bullet all in. It drops further, then so be it. Because all these reads, right, but provided you are buying blue chip reads, uh, or like those under the Capital Land, uh, those under the Fraser, uh, those under the Maple family, uh, like MPACT, uh, Capital Read, and the uh, FCT, and also the CICT. So I cover all those under my five tiger general. So those I believe is solid reads one. Won't go bankrupt one. But for the small and mid cap reads, I tell you all, just avoid. Like the I reads, I reads can go to zero. Manual life is going to zero. Or Eagle Hospitality Trust went to zero. All those cannot touch one, especially those with overseas assets. Or, but this one, right, I feel is opportunity. So he's very bearish on, on China. Then he's very bearish on REITs. He said that he, he won't buy REITs. I'm obviously, I think now is the time to buy REITs. Then he's bullish on banks. Then I feel that banks, I won't buy one. Because banks, there's no more growth already. They are being disrupted. And they have uh, and they have high China exposure. If I want banks with high China exposure, I might as well buy the China bank. I, but why I pay a premium to like 1.5 times book value to buy uh, DBS, where I can buy Ping An at the 10 20 percent discount to book value where i can buy the china uh, big banks at half price to book value so i if i want to buy dbs or ocbc i rather buy the chinese banks i think they have better value la, in, in that sense then for the clct right i think it's a easy value buy a lot of people or oh, listen to the guru say wow china uninvestable la. get out la. then try not to have china exposure la. blah 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 i think now is the best time to buy or in, into chi Chinese assets. Then CLCT is listed in Singapore. Then the parent company is Capital Land. So the biggest risk you will say that, oh, China is all fake, it's fraud. Cannot be Capital Land is fraud, ma. It's backed by Termasek, am I right? So for them, right, they, their exposure is purely in China. And they are very diversified. They have 11 retail mall. They have business park. They also have logistic park. So their, their asset is quite, quite, quite diverse, but they are more heavy towards the shopping malls. So about uh, three quarter la, is the shopping mall asset. Then one quarter is more like the industrial assets. We think about it this way. Half of the assets is the tier one city, like Beijing, Guangzhou. The other half is tier two, la, or is uh, le less, less high, higher quality. So the biggest thing is that people will look at, wow, DPU crash 8.8%, very lousy. La. Wow, jialat la. China crashing ah, this one the asset no good ah. The boss they just listen to the guru. They never do the due diligence. You look at the net property income. Actually, the net property income went up and, and it's flat. If it, then it is not a deep dive ah, but if you go through all the different units right, you see that the tenant profile, the rents, all this is still very well maintained. None of their tenants are going bankrupt, and the rents are still stepping up or, or being maintained. The occupancy rate is still okay. There's nothing wrong with them fundamentally. And China has reopened already. And it's business as usual. So if you go down to China, you'll see the shopping malls, they are crowded. And the past eight days, the golden uh, holiday, oh, the, the crowds is so packed. The shopping malls are all so packed. Yeah, and you are getting an 8% dividend yield at this price. That's very attractive. So the big question is, is the 8% dividend yield sustainable or not? Or will the DPU keep crashing? So the to answer that is, why did the DPU crash 8.8%? Yet you say that the fundamentals, everything is okay. So it crashed because of one thing called Forex. Because you're holding an overseas asset. That's why I don't like overseas asset, like especially Europe and US. That is gone case. But if it's a Chinese asset, then it's different. Uh, because you are betting on whether China can recover or not and whether the currency can strengthen or not so the past two years because of all the outflow people uh, uh, sell their chinese asset and move their funds back to the us the chinese yuan has weakened so it's like one us dollar become uh, 7.2 chinese yuan one sing dollar become now it's like 5.4 5.3 chinese yuan you it used to be like 4.6 4.8 so over the past two years, right, the Chinese yuan has weakened by 11.6% against the SGD because the rental that it operates, right, it earns in Chinese yuan. 
but it has to convert the currency to SGD to pay you the dividends because it's a Singapore stock. So the your sing dollar dividends is less due to the forex difference. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with their assets. Their assets are still solid. So all these assets, they are all built by Capital Land. One. Capital Land, half of their development is in China. They built already, then they inject all these assets to CLCT. Yeah, so it's the same model as the CICT. They build, then they inject. So you get all these high quality assets. They are in the tier one or tier two cities. So we look at the balance sheet. So the NAV is about 1.29. So usually, right, it trades at about one times book value. So the stock price has crashed uh, from, from 1.28 uh, uh, until now. Now is how much? Uh, uh, I forget the price, 80 over cents uh, or what. So the price to book right is actually 0 0.66. It's trading at one third discount to book value. So you buy this. During good times, you buy at one time book value, premium to book value. You buy, 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 you DCA, DCA, DCA. Now the REITs, they are all selling discount to book value. Yet you don't want to buy because the gurus tell you, now it's very bad, it's crashing, you don't buy. It's a bit stupid, right? It's a bit come gong, right? During good times, you keep DCA into REITs at a premium to book value. When the REITs, they are crashing, discount to book value, you don't buy. You hot cash. Put all your cash in the Singapore saving bonds. Super come gong, right? Yeah, so the best time to buy is when everyone don't dare to buy. Everyone is selling. Yeah, so I like to be a contrarian. Uh, when everyone is saying cannot buy, sell, hot cash. To me, that is the signal to be greedy when others are fearful. Uh, to buy. Uh. So the big question is for which, right? Will higher interest rate hurt them? So like yesterday, the Irish sharing, right? They are average cost of debt for the iris is 1.8 and for them right they don't stagger their debt or 60 percent of their debt will be renewed in january 2026 so if if by then they have to renew at six percent or seven percent their interest cost oh, from 1.8 jump to five percent their dpu will crash that's why iris cannot make it very risky very poorly managed that's why when you choose a read right, you must know who is the management, who is the sponsor. Do they have a track record or not? So those under the Capital, Maple and Fraser, right, they have a very good track record. They know how to manage the balance sheet. The balance sheet is the most important thing when it comes to the crisis. If your balance sheet is not well managed, right, the company can collapse during a crisis. Yeah, so their gearing is 40%. Ah. So, 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 ah, not excessive. Ah. The limit is 50%. The average cost of debt is about 3.5%. So most of those blue chip reads, right, you'll notice that they usually do about 75 to 80% fixed, then 20 to 25 floating. This is the standard. So that's good. You that's that's the standard. So your interest rate is more predictable. For their funding, right, 80% is offshore in SGD, 13% RMB. So in the past, right, SGD was very cheap because our, our interest rate is more tight to the US and the Euro zone economy so low interest rate environment so we borrow more from the low interest rate environment and rmb was expensive now is the reverse now rmb the interest rate is very low sgd the interest rate is getting higher and higher so you look at like uh, mpact la capital read la cict most of them their average borrowing cost is like 2.8 3 percent so as us continues to raise interest rate right slowly their cost of debt will go to 4%, 5% over the next two to three years. So my view is that their interest costs will go up. But because they have a very strong tenant profile, every year they can step, step up their rental by 2%, 3%. Their net property income increase. Their interest costs also increase. Then both should net off each other. But because the interest rate is higher for longer, right, the impact might be too severe. So don't be surprised is that MPACT, la, CICT, their DPU come down by 5%. So the base case is that you should expect their DPU to drop by 5%. La. So even blue chip reach, right, in this kind of environment, when they have the lowest borrowing cost, their DPU can drop 5%. Then yesterday I shared with you, iWeeks, their DPU crashed by 25%. Also, mid cap and small cap reach, right, they have a borrowing cost, higher borrowing cost. So if the risk-free rate is 4%, maybe blue-chip risk, they can borrow at 
but mid cap rates they have to borrow at five or six percent small cap rates they have to borrow at six or, or seven or even eight percent also blue chip rates they have the lowest borrowing cost so in such a so-called very stressful environment only stick stick to the blue chip rates because first of all because of their blue chip status because of their management is so reputable confirm they can borrow money one if, if i'm dbs bank capital land or capital related risks come and borrow money i will lend to them because they are thomas back they are blue chip status i will lend to them and the interest cost is also cheap if you have amount ako ah, small cap reads ah, i feel it's risky i won't lend to you or even if i lend i will lend at a very high interest rate so usually like in the 208 uh, global financial crisis right a lot of small cap reads they were unable to renew their debt and that's why they have to do placement they have to do rights issue at rock bottom price and that's a super dilution aims reads was called mac after cook reads it crashed from one dollar to ten cent size and reads crashed from one dollar to ten cent so aims reads is also one of the ak top position ah. so how it became one dollar if from 10 cents right it did a 10 for one consolidation then it went back to one dollar that's the story of aim street and it used to be called MacArthur cook reads i also don't like this kind of this kind of reads ah. doing good times right it gives you a high yield eight percent ten percent but during crisis this kind of reads they can just explode yeah so for their for china right you see that they have been cutting rates so now it's actually better to borrow in RMB than in SGD. So they can actually renew their debt in RMB. So for their loan portfolio, you see it's very well staggered one. So every year, right, you only renew 10 or 15% of, of your debt. Whereas IRIS is poorly managed in 2026 January. One shot, they will renew 60% of their debt. And if they have to renew it at a high cost, the, the REIT will just explode. Yeah, so this is more certainty, it's more stability. So in green color is RMB la. So recently they have been renewing in RMB because it's cheaper. So <clears throat> they can just borrow more in RMB. So their current borrowing cost of 3.5%. I don't expect the borrowing cost to shoot up or to go to 5 or 6 percent. No la. They, because their assets is in China, they can just do a secure onshore RMB loan at 3.5-4 percent. So their interest cost maybe just go up a bit to just 4 percent. So their DPU is not that pressured. So their DPU is still intact. So for this, you must do your due diligence. Why is the DPU crashing? Can they maintain DPU? What is the tenant's profile? What is the occupancy rate? Uh, and what is their contract? Is it master lease, individual lease? What is the lease duration? Also, you have to dig deeper. La. My today is not a deep dive, la, so I don't go into those. So be fearful when others are greedy. So banks i think a lot of people are buying banks i'm not interested in the singapore banks ah. I, I think singapore banks are dinosaur la. you look at dbs people say that dbs innovating wow also going to fintech but the news i read is that this year alone dbs three times ah, that the, their server crashed i go to the shop i do the pay now cannot pay then i check the news pay now is down and now i pay by cash so it, it, it's not stable la. then they are pay now, they are burning money to capture market share. Every Friday, you go to the hawker, you use the pay now, you get back $3. Other than that, uh, do you really use the DBS app for, for your everyday payment? So I think more people are using uh, Shopee Pay, Grab Pay, uh, the Shopee app, all this. Lah. So I think the, 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 the fintech players, they have the room to grow lah, and they will capture the market share away from the traditional banks. So I won't buy DBS, I won't buy OCBC. They are dinosaur companies. That's why I'm fearful of them. I, I will avoid them. But if you want to buy DBS and OCBC, I won't fault you. They still have, they will, they can maintain their revenues and earnings from their interest business, their loan business. But they won't have any growth. Lah. You buy just for dividends and not for growth. Well, then the other thing is be greedy when others are fearful. So AK now say, wow, we is very bad. Lah. Cannot buy. Lah. But already crash 20 30 percent you don't buy them when you want to buy if you think it will crash 50 percent then that's that's like you believe that this re this recession will be as bad as the global financial crisis like. even during covid period the correction for which was about 35 percent like. we are almost there already like. we're almost 
Uh, you look at all the REITs, they are almost uh, COVID lows already. So during COVID period, REITs crash to the COVID low. People say, wow, COVID very bad, la. lockdown, la. Wow, cannot buy, la. cannot buy, la. Wow, very bad. Uh, Bill Edmonds said that the, the economy will be closed for two years. La. Cannot buy, and then V-shaped recovery, wow, miss the boat. Then now REITs crash again, test the COVID lows. Then say, wow, cannot buy, la. cannot buy. AK say will drop lower. <laughs> then suddenly, Good news. Uh, uh, U.S. November one. Uh, Fed never raised the rates. Uh, they say that mm, inflation should be able to be managed. We decide not to raise the rates. Rates rarely five ten percent. Then you miss the boat again. So always you miss the boat. Then you blame. Ah yeah, what a, the market is weak. Ah, stupid. Ah, the government. Then the stupid YouTubers tell me don't buy. Miss the boat twice. Ah, so two zero two zero. Covid you miss the boat. Two zero two three you also miss the boat. You always miss the boat. Then. <laughs> Who you blame? Well, so when everyone say cannot buy, right? Then do you have the courage to be a contrarian, to be greedy when others are fearful? Yeah. So so my 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 view is that, uh, REITs is can buy la, but only buy the blue chip ones under the Maple Capital and Fraser family though. Yeah, like like the Fraser Center Point Trust also can also can buy if you got interest. I might do a deep dive on it in the future. So feel free to let me know like, what, what you all want me to cover. Uh, US, uh, Hong, Hong Kong, or Singapore market also can. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Yeah, also chit chat with you all a bit before I, I go offline. Well, today quite a lot of people uh, break new high already. 162, 164. Uh, Sunday all no need to go dating, uh, no need to accompany family. Uh. <coughs> okay. Wow, today the chat move very fast. Uh. All in BTC. Uh. Yeah, uh, today's semi voodoo never I think Bitcoin will go up there. Uh. Bitcoin will go up, I think. Doing what well, Bitcoin is like uh art is the uh, digital gold in, in that sense, am I right? So we look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin no movement, uh, flat. Uh. I'm surprised. Yeah. But gold gold should go up, yeah. So we see Bitcoin will, will go up or not. Will go to 30k or not? <clears throat> Ani Goro, banks is very dinosaur. Mm. Sun Chai, AK47 said he sold his iris. Is it? I don't know. I thought iris was his big position. I also don't know because he's not transparent. I also don't know what, what is his portfolio. EK, AK71 said if iris 26 cents can buy. Wow. 26 cents is gone case already. Eh. Ada Ang, I, I was thinking have time to save up for China and US equity, not in time. Crash too soon. Uh, yeah. Suddenly now now crash ready. Okay. Vivian Ng, if Irish drop to point two six, he still won't buy. He will say drop to point one five. Yeah. Keep shifting the, 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 the goalposts. Masterworks uh, Masterworks is invest in the art one. Uh, Masterworks is is dangerous. Eh? It's not so liquid. Eh? It, it feels a bit scammy. Eh? You go and Google the YouTube videos. Some people think that Masterworks is scam. Eh? You you be careful. Lah. Uh, but I don't like to invest in art. Art, lah. art, art don't generate income. Eh? I prefer invest in businesses that generate earnings, uh, all this. They can grow your wealth. Yeah. A lot of uh, influencers they, they promote the masterworks, so you, you all be careful. Uh. Feels feels a bit shady. Yeah. Miracle interest rate so high, CPF only give two point five percent. Yeah, a lot of influencers tell you, but not everybody is risk adverse. Everybody tell you put in the CPF, supercharge your CPF, put in the SA, get four percent. But I tell you ah, uh, as if you invest in the you invest your money right, you must ask yourself how long does it take to double your money. Uh, because uh, you think uh, how, how many uh, that I got this question master does inflation compound or not of course you look at your type uh, type uh, last time two three dollar can eat last time chicken rice also two three dollar now it's four five dollar don't be surprised uh, five years later your, your chicken rice is eight dollars your type uh, is eight dollars they double already then you put in CPF how long does it take for your money to double you get four percent interest rate you need like Maybe 20 years eh, for your money to double. Eh. You look at the HDB price. 
HDB price ah, last time ah, my parents buy that time, I think 80k. Now it's like 400k, 5x already. Your CPF money got 5x or not? Then you think HDB 5 years, 10 years later, 400,000? No, HDB is 800,000, 1 million already. So, so you, you put your money in, in CPF, you get the 4%, you die with inflation. Yeah, because the, the inflation compound faster than your CPF compound. Yeah. So, and so for AK, a lot of people say that, uh, a lot of people do the calculation is that why is the CPF got 1.1 million? It's mostly because he sold his condo for, for a big profit. That's why the money go back to his CPF. It's not from a uh, savings one. Uh. It's very hard to save 1.1 million. And not, not from compounding also. Yeah, it's mostly from his property gains. That's why his CPF got 1.1 million. Yeah, so, so. Your one M65, ah, you keep putting money into your CPF to 1 million. Ah. By the time you have 1 million in your CPF, I think you're already 60 years old. Ah. You're already half dead already. <laughs> yeah, so you think ah, what, what you want. Ah. If you put CPF, it's zero risk. Ah, but no risk, uh, no risk, then no venture, no gain. No. You are just preserving your wealth. No. But, but your wealth never grow. Ah. It, it died to inflation. Ah. To beat inflation, you, you must invest in stocks. Ah. Or property law, yeah, to, to hedge against inflation, yeah. Okay, I see. Jen Philip, welcome, welcome. Vivian Ng, I have um, more friends who say their pension sum revised down three to four times and they haven't reached near retirement age. Wow, example like in Europe, la, Italy, all this, right? Uh, their retirement age was, I think, 60 years old. Then in Italy, right? Uh, they raised the retirement age to 62. Was it France or Italy? I forget already. Then everyone go on riot. So, uh, the po there's also political risk in your CPF. Now they tell you 65, they give you the payout. What if in future they revise it? 68, 70, 72, then you can start to have the payout. So, you, there's so much uncertainty there. I think CPF is more risky than stocks. Eh. Imagine... Now you are 20 years old, you put, you voluntarily contribute, you supercharge your CPF for 30 years. You think you can retire, you can draw your CPF money out at 55. By the time you reach 55, they tell you that they extend it already. Everything becomes 65, 70, 75. Wow, you go crazy. All your money is stuck inside there. You don't have the passive income to retire early. You cannot fire. You are forced to work until 65, 70, 75. There's a lot of risk. That's why... I, I think that voluntary contribution to CPF is come gong. Really stupid. That's my honest truth. Ah. A lot of people say, Master, you don't know what you're saying. Ah. Say, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, Master is wrong. Oh. But AK is Guru. Master is Gundu. So you listen to Guru, then you listen to Gundu. Then you come to your own conclusion. CPF, uh, if you're in your 20s, 30s, uh, putting money into bond instrument is a bad decision. Ah. Uh, you compound at 4% really is, doesn't make sense. Uh. If you're in your 20s and 30s, I'd rather you just buy the index. Buy the world index if you don't want to stop pick. US, China, all inside the index. Then you can grow your money at 8%. You compound money 8% at for 20 years uh, or 30 years. Uh, there is a huge difference uh, as compared to compounding at 4%. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, the 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 masterworks one I don't comment uh. I, I don't know about the masterworks uh. JH, welcome welcome. Monday US stocks can rally. Uh. Monday US stocks uh. the defense stocks will rally. The tech stocks will come down. I think the the big tech the valuations on the high side. But US we are going into earnings season. Tuesday PepsiCo will report results. Friday the banks will report results. Then I'll update you all. So we look at the earnings result. But the initial impact impact is usually sell down uh. So usually Monday the global markets will, will be down one two three percent, yeah. But I think it's a buying opportunity lah. If you, because Singapore not affected by the war ma, Singapore also not affected by oil prices. If if the REITs like tomorrow market open, REITs drop three percent, then go in and buy the blue chip REITs ah. Why why be scared? Am I right? Yeah. So we see how it goes lah. Yeah, but most likely short short term should be bearish. And if the uh, war is short-lived, then the market can rebound from, from there. 
Yeah, so I, I hope the war is a uh, short, short lift. Yeah, I, I do another poll. Uh. Is now the time to buy into REITs for 7%? Now, on average, uh, like, like the REITs, I, I think, can get 7%. Uh. Like the CLCT is 8%, then some blue chip REITs is 6-7% really. Like Kepler REITs is 7%, then the FCT is 6%. So 6-7-8% really, the blue chip REITs. Uh, yes, now cheap cheap can hold or oh? no <laughs> must hold cash be safe <laughs> okay so uh, see what your feel what's your sentiments is now is it the time to buy reads or not I don't know I don't know I don't know but but I, I disclaimer I'm not buying reads ah uh. my portfolio is ninety percent Alibaba ten percent SE but it's, but if every day I talk about SE and Baba is boring lah. Uh. So you all ask me about risk and banks that I, I do my research that I share with you all what are my thoughts are but I, I'm not vested in banks or REITs mm -hmm. Sean Tan, Ada, do YouTube search for Tim Bagger on Masterworks? Yeah, I think I saw the video The Masterworks is really a bit shady Tim Bagger is, is a YouTuber I think it has 500 over 1000 subscribers, quite, quite big. Yeah, the masterworks I skip, uh, I really don't know. Ekik, what are your views on Saucer Read? Uh? Uh, IPO 80 cents now, 60. Uh, wow, this one I'm not familiar. Uh. China Assets, this one I'm really not familiar, but I, I won't touch. Uh. I don't even know who is the, the, the sponsor. Usually, all the small cap reads uh, cannot touch one because their borrowing cost is, 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 is higher. Yeah, so what wow. well, the yield so high ah? Ten percent. Usually when the risks are paying eight or ten percent, uh you right, usually there's a lot of problem. Ah. Well wow, the I think the, the chart wise ah, it looks like the C L C T exactly the downtrend. Boss is the is the chi china assets ma. Yeah. I don't know. This one I don't know, but I feel feels like I cannot buy. Yeah, so so maybe I just go to the investor relationship. Must look at look at their presentation now. What's their Borrowing cost la, all that. Yeah. Okay, I, I slowly see. <clears throat> Anyone bought Paycom? Ah? Paycom, I also do, don't know what is it. Yeah, financial result. Okay, we just look, at, look at their presentation. <clears throat> Maybank King Eng also charge high commission. The, the, the banks all is still minimum $25. I rather use the discount broker, no, no minimum. Yeah. Other ang I don't buy there buy US bank. US bank is also very cheap there. It's like the Citibank Bank of America, they are all trading at discount to book value. But we look at the coming results Friday, see how. Master, I use PayLa every day. Well, that's good. You support the DBS. Yeah, PayLa. Then pay now is all the three banks also can use. DT. Welcome, welcome. Wow, Ani Goro buying reads also. Ah. So many of you are buying reads. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All the is China assets. Ah. All the leverage is very low. Eh. 26%. Actually, it looks, looks quite quite okay. DPU is uh, going up. Right? But DPU actually reduced uh, in 2-2-2 two, two, two because the China was in lockdown. That's why the, the DPU slowed down. It's whether they can hold it there or not. Yeah, but mostly you see China, but they, their asset is that once you move inland, right, it's actually the tier 2 and tier 3 cities already. Those the coastal one, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen is the tier one city. Yeah, DPU dropped by seven percent. So uh, the second quarter, so it could be forex lah. You look at their property income. Property income actually about the same, only down by 0. 0.5. Yeah, so the DPU down is also probably due to forex. NAV also down. Yeah, the leverage is quite low lah. But they are see. See, that's what I tell you. See, the weighted average cost of that. When you see CLCT, right, because they are blue chip status, they can borrow cheap. But this one is like, uh, uh, I don't know, Xiao Mao, Xiao Go Read, all this. Zapper Lan Read, Zapper Lan Read, right, your borrowing cost very high. You see, from last year, 4.9, it jumped to 5.8. That's why the DPU is impacted. That's why I don't like small cap and mid cap reads. Imagine the borrowing cost go to 7 or 8%. Because they also don't have a strong uh, sponsor. Yeah. So, 
uh, small cap and mid cap risk all cannot touch. Uh. The worry is higher borrowing cost. Yeah. But their asset quality is a lot is tier two, tier tier three city. So you are, you are it is not say very high quality read. Uh. Yeah. So this one I think avoid la. I, I pre this one you see nine percent right. Then it is small cap read. I rather you take CLCT eight percent blue chip reads. CLCT I think you, you sleep well at night la. You you get one percent less dividend. Uh, it's okay. I, I don't like this one. I, I don't like this one. I, I prefer CLCT la. The borrowing cost uh, looks uh, very high. I don't know who is their sponsor. The sponsor is what China company is it? Yeah, leading operator. Who is the manager? Yeah, what's? Yeah, also not familiar with them. Saucer is what? Is it is it a China uh Bushi company or what? Yeah. Oh, the founder is V Xu V two, founder of Saucer Group. Saucer Group, I think, is a China property developer group. That if I if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Premier Outlets uh, is a retail group. Uh, is, is a re retail group. Then they manage the shopping malls, all this. Uh. Yeah. But at least it's shopping mall exposure, not like property development or residential. Shopping mall is actually okay. Re residential one is, is the one under distress. But I don't like that. I don't like that. The borrowing cost seems very high. Lah. So, so I don't like. Okay. EV and green energy. I believe nothing new on the Israel Palestine crash. Ah. This their fourth time they, they crash crash already. We see if they can end it soon or not. Yeah. If it's very prolonged or other countries also start to escalate, then the market will be more fearful. Yeah, hopefully a few days they can settle. Or the most one or two weeks. Ah. They don't drag it out too long. Ah. <clears throat> I'm think master. When I sold my condo, I only returned my CPF withdrawal plus interest tax, as could uh, appreciation. Yeah, uh, that because when you borrow money, right, to buy the con, you to buy the condo, or you draw your CPF to buy the condo, right. Technically, you are borrowing money from the CPF. You own then the accrued interest. So it depends on how long you, you hold the you borrow the money for. Let's say. You you draw draw the CPF let's say three hundred thousand, then you ten years later then you sell right, total you put back right it could be double the amount because it's the CPF plus the accrued interest yeah, so so it depends on your situation it depends on how much of the CPF you you, you draw out yeah so if CPF draw plus the interest the capital appreciation you get it in cash, mm. but for AK right. What I read is that uh he voluntarily put into his the CPF a lot. Yeah. Maybe he condo get the gains, right? He take the gains and put back into CPF. That's why his CPF got 1.1 1 .1 million so much. It's mostly from his the con condo gains. Uh. Vivian Ng, let's be balanced. CPF works for some, don't work for other. Yeah, it depends. Uh, if you don't know how to invest, you are risk adverse, put CPF, nothing wrong ma. If I say you only primary school education, work in the coffee shop, uh, then uncle, uncle, everything also don't know, then of course you put CPF better ma. Better than you gamble in the stock market. So it depends on your profile la. For some people CPF is good, some some people CPF, uh, there's a better choice than, than CPF la. I'm think, I suspect AK work as high stress trader, achieve High end bonus long long ago, bonus also Ghana CPF contribution very short maybe yeah, but I think AK seventy one was a high earner. Same for the Mr. Lu. Mr. Lu was a CEO of the Insing unit in Singtel, so their salary was wow, very high one. That's why they are, they have millions of dollar because their investing strategy is very conservative. It's more like we have pre preserver perseverance ah uh, pre, 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 preserve uh, perseverance uh. yeah so uh, most of their uh, net worth is built through their income mj tang uh, uh, ml i just normally contribute to cpf for tax relief seven thirty seven year old hit sa 
uh, FRS, uh, wow, retirement sum already, uh, waiting to withdraw at 55, that's good, that's good. So now you must focus on your health, or oh, get a good girlfriend, go hiking, every week go distress with your friend, with your girlfriend, go shopping, go eat restaurant, yeah, enjoy life, don't think so much already, yeah. Just wait for 55, collect your passive income, yeah. David Wong, not all people know how to invest the correct way. Yeah, some people scared them put into the CPF. That, that, that's nothing wrong also. Yeah, don't know how to invest them put CPF. Uh. Yeah. So there's no wrong, no right run. Uh. The, the, the market is very dynamic one. Uh. There's many choices. Uh. Clutch 11, Baba is never boring. Please discuss. Yeah, next week, next week. Uh, got, got market, got top. Monday, Monday, I, I'll come back to update you all on the China market. So far, the golden week, week, uh, the eight week data looks very good. The data is a new high la, above the two zero uh one nine level. So retail spending it is coming back. But property market is still still very bad. China property market is still very bad. But that's the only one area that is dragging la, like, like manufacturing, retail, tourism, all, all okay really. Vivian Ng, if my parents and parents-in-law can take up all their CPF at 55, I guarantee they have no money left. Yeah, last time the old policy is all can take up. Then the Lao uncle, Tiko Tiko, uh, the money cannot cheated by the China girl. They promised them, oh, come, uh, come retire with me in China. Then they take the money, buy the China house, then kick them out. Oh, uh, they sell away their HDB, withdraw all their CPF, then the, the Ch China girl don't want them. <clears throat> That's why now uh, become like a pension system. Uh, give us the money payout safer. But got pro and con. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a special. Like talk about US market. US, US the retirement is 401k. Then China is that the... What, uh, what is the China pension one called? Uh, uh, the, uh, you can choose one. Whether you want to pay the, the, uh, the Chinese pension fund or uh, Every month you put contribution, then when you retire, you get the. Uh, it's similar to CPF, la, but the CPF is optional one in China. Yeah, so uh, the Singapore CPF, right, you have to compare it with different country. Like Malaysia is called the EPF. Then the Malaysia, they don't give uh, a fixed interest rate, they invest in equity. Then every year, different rate of return also. Yeah. David Wong, Malaysia here, a lot of those. Retiree cannot scam, cannot scam after they withdraw your EPF. Yeah, once you retire, huh, all all the young Vietnam bu, uh, China bu want to come and scam your retirement money already. Have to be careful. Yeah. Okay, I skip some of the comments. I I try to look for questions. Uncle buy Yang Zijiang ah, wow. Yang Zijiang actually they got spin off the Yang Zijiang Finance Company. Uh, I think it's like two third discount to book, then like ten percent dividend you. Damn scary, uh. But I also don't dare to buy. Uh. It's it's a uh, black box, uh. Don't know you got see or not. Yang Zijiang Finance. Uh, hey. Um, Yang Zijiang Finance Holding, and uh, yeah. So it used to be a shipping. The core business is the shipping business, but they make so much money, they become a shadow bank to do the loan. And now they spin off their shadow bank. But this is a cyclical industry la. Also, this one is avoid. This one cannot buy one. What's the cyclical industry? Yang Zijiang Finance is their shadow bank business. I think that IPO at what? It's down, down a lot la, I remember. IPO fifty cents ah. Fifty cents now drop drop until now. The dividend you I think is very high. I think it's like ten percent or something. Yeah. See the dividend history. Or oh, five percent you only ah. So so low. Ah. I thought about ten percent. That time I was I see their discount to book value. It's like more than half price or two third discount to their book value. Yeah. But this is a shadow bank. Ah. Yeah. Very high risk one. Don't touch better. Just just to share with you all only. CPI special account is making five to six percent. That one is only your, your first sixty K right or something. Then they, they, they give you the bonus. Wow, you have so much discussion on the CPF. Ah. Yeah, yep, CH. AK top out SA early. His first four years, he top out SA. Shun Chai, but, but, one capital gains. Ah. Then follow master, Baba and SE. 
try for capital gains or, or maybe master will explode yeah Ada Ang, I never contribute CPF since I left SG 23 years ago don't know if they will come after me then you can if you if you give up your Singapore citizenship I think you can draw out all, all your the the CPF that or Brunei ah. Brunei how, how how is Brunei Brunei I think is very peaceful right it's also an oil rich company Brunei and SGD one one for one exchange DT a lot of people earn hundred k in Australia but Australia here the tax is very high or thirty percent or what Brunei boring ah Brunei is to fire ma relax relax ah yeah relax and quiet yeah what wow, one dollar can have a packet of rice with chicken and samba wow Wow, go go Brunei retire. Mr. C, Master, can you do the dive on 1797? Tong Fan Ping Xuan. Ah. Wow, I don't know what is this. Eh. What is this? Ah? One nine, what? 1797. I totally don't know what is this. Easy buy. Ah. Wow, easy buy. Easy buy. Ah. Easy, easy buy ah. I thought it's easy buy. East buy, I don't know what is this. Uh. What PE so high? Uh. Yeah, I I will if a lot of people feedback that I might cover lor. I don't cover all companies. Uh. Yeah. East buy holding limited. I also don't know what, what is this. Yeah, so I, I see majority one. Uh. If a lot of people feedback that I might cover. Don't know, uh. I really don't, don't know what is this. Uh. Dong Fang Zhen Xuan. Oh, it's the new Oriental. Uh, new Oriental was the uh, the digital edu edu tech. Then they can ha hammered by the CCP. Then now uh they do the live stream all this. Yeah, that one is quite interesting. Ah, uh. their their story is interesting. Okay, yeah, end the end the poll. Wow, sixty nine votes. Six nine is is a good number. So, I I know the Tong Fan Zhen Xuan. Ah, uh, is the live streaming. Then then they sell things. One uh. quite 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 interesting. Ah. Uh. They convert their model from education now become live streaming. Okay, is now the time to buy into weeds for seven percent uh yield? Half yes now cheap cheap can buy, no must hot cash. Yeah, so it's the views is always very mixed one. Half say can buy, half say cannot buy. I also don't know can can buy or not. I also don't know. Can buy or not. Yeah, are you do you want to be greedy when others are are fearful? Yeah. Okay, I, I skip the comments. Yeah, Yang Zijiang value trap. Uh. Yang Zijiang is cyclical in nature. Okay, yeah. So that that's all for tonight. Yeah, nine twenty already. Getting late. Master want to rest. So Monday tomorrow Monday market update lor. Maybe talk about the China and US market. But we see how it goes uh. Most likely, uh, tomorrow the 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 Hong Kong and Singapore market open is lower already. Easily one one or two percent drop lah. Uh. Hopefully la. then we then while we are sleeping ha, people are fighting the war. Hopefully they can just steamroll faster and the war lor. Don't, don't, don't fight too long. Ah yeah. Vietnam bull won't scam you ah. Yeah. How, how you know won't, won't scam? I also don't know. Yeah. SG passport is the best in the world. Yeah, I can go everywhere, no need visa. SG passport is the most expensive passport in the black market. SG passport I think can sell for like uh ten to thirty thousand one in, in the black market. Can go anywhere in, in the world. SG Passport is, is one of the most valuable passport. Yeah. Five five AU okay. David Wong, Manga said not all people got the emotional ability to invest in stock market in their own. Yeah, it's very hard to uh control your emotions. Uh. Wow, Brunei so relaxed ah. Uh. I never go Brunei before leh. Yeah. But nowadays ah, uh, I think we should be fortunate uh, that we are in Singapore. Don't have war all this. You see Europe war, Middle East also war. Then next I think maybe in US, US is the internal war already. All, all, all the uh, riots, all this ah. Uh. Oh, ads will run for some viewers. Skip ads. Oh, now we will auto run. First time I see that leh. Uh. Now it's auto one eh, the ads. But I tell you uh, I set conservative. Uh. Because here you see I can manually insert right? I never press any of it. It own sell come out one. I think maybe huh, the alphabet right, the business is no good eh, I suspect. 
because they facing competition for Microsoft. That's why YouTube ah, they keep pushing co uh, creators like us to monetize. Then everything they simplify. Uh, from November onwards, right? They only let you choose ah, like conservative, uh, balanced, or aggressive. A lot of things you cannot customize really. They they preset everything for you. So even you choose conservative ah, maybe they will show you a lot of ads because you, when they show you the ads right, I earn fifty five percent. Then uh, YouTube earn forty five percent. So I think Alphabet, uh, they are pushing more ads. They want to earn more money. Singapore peaceful, no natural disaster. Yeah, we shall not take our peace for granted. A lot of people say, wow, Singapore no good, no good. Uh. Wow, here you so peaceful. Uh. You never go before Europe. Last time I Netherlands, I play my card game tournament. Then I see my friend's friend uh, who is a dealer. First we trade the magic, the gathering card game. The whole is one suitcase uh, inside. Wow. 100, 200, over 1,000 worth of the card game. In the back alley, uh, Ghana robbed. Uh, the person stalking him from the convention center all the way to he go back. So once in the dark area, he take the pistol out and rob the dealer. Grab his suitcase, run away. So uh, so scary. The person that Ghana robbed, uh, he wet his pants. Uh. People take the gun point at you. Your pee all come out. Uh. That's how dangerous. Uh. So Netherlands is Holland now. Ah. So there's also it's a bit like Thailand now. Thailand is the is the Holland of Asia. Can can smoke weed. So Holland there is like the land of drugs. Oh. can smoke weed. Ah. eat the space cake. All this. Yeah, very corrupted. ML can do a deep dive on Thai beverage. Recently, I I talked a bit about the Thai beverage already. Yeah. So. The, the Thai beverage, yeah, in future, I might do a deep dive. But the coming uh, one month, I'll be busy on the earnings season. The US and, and the Hong Kong market, the earnings season begin already. So uh, after the earnings season, then I'll start to do the deep dive again. Thai beverage, uh, I think it's very undervalued. 12.5 times PE, 4 times dividend yield. But Thai beverage, I think my, my, my buy call will be like 50 cents or lower. Lor. Because I think the recent shooting is still a negative. Lah. So short term, it should be a downtrend. Then the, the other negative with the Thailand economy is that they want to reverse on the wheat, lah, the majurana. They want to, now it's like free to use. Mah. They want to switch it back to medical use only. So they roti plata. So that one might hurt their economy also. Because a lot of people, they go to Thailand, is the land of sin. Mah. Go eat, go drink, go smoke weed go massage all this then they reverse the policy on the majorana it will hurt their tourism a bit lah. so Thai beverage still on the downtrend lah. I think 50 cents lah. 50 cents probably about there lah. 50 cents is like 11 times earnings then about 4.5% 4, 4 dividend yield long term I think it will still do well lah. like that uh, because beer and the hard liquor good times or bad times you still, still have to drink and their brand it's still quite good. Uh. And they're not facing new new competitor. And they have like a lot of traditional business like F&N. They have a 30% stake. Vina Milk, 20% stake. All this is solid cash count also. Yeah, so Thai beverage, I think, think it's quite good. Uh. So in the Singapore market, right, there are a lot of dinosaur company. Yeah, then those with like strong brand uh, like Thai beverage and Sing Song that I talked about. Uh, these are the rare few uh, that you can buy and hold for long term. These are the, the non wheat company that you can buy. La. So for the Singapore market, right, <clears throat> the only three companies that I recommend la, that is non wheat la, is like Thai Beverage, uh, Seng Song, and also Hong Kong Land. These three only. La. Other than that, you, you want to buy is the banks and REITs only. Singapore really is dinosaur market. La. Okay, so that's all my sharing. Take care all. Have a good rest. Also, next weekday, I update you all again. Huh? Jasper Lim, ML, how you calculate poker hand handouts? Ah? You play, last time I read a lot of books. You, 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 by default, you know the odds already. But there are a lot of the odds calculator. Then there's a lot of a simulator also. Like pocket aces pre-market against two random cards. Your win rate is 80%. Then like, you, you are drawing to a flush or drawing... To, to uh straight you you are also hitting is like thirty five percent. Once you play long enough, you roughly know the shortcut to all the odds already. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You all chit chat. I'm so happy. Ah. Uh. Don't bear to go. Ah. Uh. Okay. So see you all.
Have a good rest. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.